almost no one is talking about what I see is a very exciting radio coming soon. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. Hey, welcome back, guys. Jason here, KM4ACK. There's been a lot of coverage from the Tokyo Ham Fair uh, that included both the Yezu FTX radio that's coming out early next year and the new ICOM 7760 that was shown off uh, during the Ham Fair. What I'm not seeing a lot of coverage on, though, is the new Kenwood mobile rig. And this one has me really excited for one particular reason that we'll get to here in just a second. Let's go ahead and jump over to this web page so we can take a look at this new radio. All right, so I want to give a shout out to hamlife.jp for posting this article and the images that we're going to see. Now, this is a Japanese website, so I have used Google to translate it to English. There might be some discrepancies there due to the translation, but we'll go with what we've got here right now. So this is a new APRS D-Star compatible Kenwood radio for the 2 meter and 70 centimeter band. So this is a mobile radio that we're going to look at. And here's one of the images of it. Now, the first thing that jumps out at me is, A, that front-firing speaker, which is always nice to have. I really appreciate that in the FTM 500 that I'm running now. The other thing is how similar the appearance of it is to the FTM 400 that I always loved. Now, unfortunately, we don't have any color images of this. Everything is going to be black and white. And something else to note here is this is a mock-up in an acrylic case. Uh, so we don't know exactly what the radio is going to look like once it is released. But this is a radio that I'm really excited about. Uh, so some of the new features are it is D-Star and APRS compatible, uh, and it will it has simultaneous reception of two signals. Now, does that mean it's full duplex? Well, we can only hope for that, uh, but it does say here that it is simultaneous reception. Now, another similarity between this radio that's being shown here and the FTM 400 is it is a completely separate radio, meaning you can't attach the head to the body. Uh, and that's the exact way the FTM 400 worked, and that never bothered me. I was always able to tuck the body away and then just use the control head for operating the radio. And if you happen to have one of their previous radios, like the uh, D710, the mounting bracket looks like it's going to be compatible between the two radios. So if you're replacing uh, the 710 with this new rig in your car, you wouldn't even have to swap out the mounting bracket. It's also equipped with a tripod uh, hole, so that's going to be that uh, quarter 20 threaded hole on the bottom of the control unit so you could mount this with a small tripod if you were going to use this in the shack. Now obviously it does have the built-in GPS receiver that's going to be required for APRS operations and next it mentions that uh, that unit is equipped with that front firing speaker and he indicates that you'll be able to hear this even in a noisy environment like the mobile. So there's a little bit of a closer photograph of the front of this radio. Now, one of the things I like about the Kenwoods and one of the places that they're light years ahead of Yezu is their user interface on APRS. If this is anything like the D75, the user interface is going to be much friendlier than what it is on the FTM 500 and even the FTM 400. For instance, if you go to reply to a APRS message on either of those radios, you have to delete the original message before you can actually type your reply. On the D75, as soon as you hit reply, it gives you a fresh blank screen so you're just ready to start typing without having to go back and delete the original message before you can type your reply. So that's where Kenwood has really nailed it on the APRS uh, user interface. Now, all of the D-Star operations that we saw in the new D-75 are also going to be available in this new mobile offering. And that includes uh, the operation of a reflector 
uh, that has become easier with this one. Another nice thing to see manufacturers finally swapping over to is the USB-C. Now, I'm guessing it's USB-C from this photograph here. It's not a real clear shot, but I'm pretty certain that that is going to be the case. And we saw USB-C charging on the D75, so I suspect that we will also get USB-C on this new offering. Now, one thing I'm really curious of is, are we going to be able to access the TNC in this radio like we do with the D75? That would be a really, really awesome feature in this radio. There's no mention of Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, so I have no clue if either of those are going to be available. But even being able to plug up a USB-C cable and pull out the GPS data and the TNC data would be incredible. You'll notice two speaker ports there. So one of those is for the main band and one of those ports is for the sub band. So you could run that as two separate speakers if that's something that you wanted to do. It also has a microphone terminal right there on the side of the head unit and it features the micro SD slot. I'm sure that's for backing up your settings and your memories from the radio. Now, the downside to this radio is what he says right here. The price is expected to be higher than the D75. So what is that price going to look like? Well, we can only guess at this point. Uh, since the entry price for the D75, at least when it first hit the market, was $750. I'm not sure if there's any sales on that or not just yet. I didn't check before turning on the camera today. But assuming that uh, that one is still $750, I'm going to guess that this mobile unit is going to come in at probably somewhere around the $1,000 price point. Uh, so quite a bit more expensive than the FTM 500, which hit the market, I believe, at 650 uh, when it first came out. So I am super stoked to see this radio. Uh, you guys might have to provide a spare bedroom for me, though, to sleep in when the wife finds out that I want this new radio, as I've already put my order in for the Yezu FTX. So this might look like two new radios uh, in 2025 for the shack. We'll have to wait and see. All right, I hope you found this information helpful. I wish more people were talking about this radio. Be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.